right? Okay. Yeah, so let's look at um, Philippians. I'm sorry, <laughs> Ephesians. Philippians is what we're going to look at next. Okay, so we're looking at uh, Ephesians chapter 5. And uh, Paul, um, you know, uh, after 4, uh, after chapter 4, when he says, you know, do not grieve the spirit, he uh, he goes on to uh, give us some instructions, you know, from here on. Like, even from chapter 4, we see that towards the end of chapter 4, he starts, um, you know, giving some instructions to the church uh, about uh, what, uh, you know, uh, how they should live there, this this kind of a spiritual life. And also, um, if, uh, in, in chapter 4, he's talked about uh, the fivefold ministry and all that, and and what is the role of the saints, and uh, what is the role of the fivefold, and so on. So, um, so he's, he's uh, you know, uh, uh, very in a very detailed manner. This is what the church should be. This is what the saints should be. Um, you know, going after, and everyone is involved in ministry, uh, and uh, the, the church is growing up. The body is being edified, and all that. So, um, so he says, from four chapter four verse seventeen, he says, "This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk." As the rest of the Gentiles do in the futility of their mind, right? So we we looked at that. So he said, okay, this is uh, you should not, sorry, you should not live like this, but you should live like this, okay? And then that's how he goes on. And chapter five, we also saw he says, be imitators of God, right? Mimic God, copy what God is uh, not doing. Look at Him and be like Him. Uh, so that is what it means, right? Uh, so which means, first of all, first step is to see uh, God or study or observe to see who, what or who he is like. And you follow, you obey, you mimic. Uh, so he's saying, be imitators of God and then walk in love and so on, right? Um, okay, let's go to verse 8. Uh, maybe we'll just go through that again, right? Verses 8 to 14. Um to verse 8 it says for you were once darkness right so before that he is saying certain things should not be part of your life okay because you are an imitator of god you are a child of god and it says, as dear children be imitators of god and therefore walk in love and so on so let foolish talking filthiness fornication um uh, cause jesting uh, you know, or you know, in the sense, coarse jesting means like joking in a very um, crude manner. Right? Let this not even be mentioned among you, right? Which is let it not be named among you. Says, um, and then, and then he goes on to say, you know, a fornicator, unclean person, covetous man, has no inheritance in the kingdom of God. Right? So let no one deceive you with empty words. Because because of these things, uh, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. So um, now that is the our God is a loving God, a God is a God of grace, but you know that our God is also a God of justice, and the wrath of God, uh, the judgment of God, is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Right? So, uh, like we saw several scriptures, we saw in Romans, we saw. That God has given enough proof, ample proof, is and also is um, exhorting us, the church, through whom you know He wants to manifest the wisdom or the glory, you know, through even the principalities and powers. So, so it is our duties commissioned the church, commissioned us as believers, disciples, to go share the gospel. So He, you know, enough ample proof uh, to the church. To the people, and um, Romans talks about how people have exchanged the truth for the lie, right? For what may be known of God is is very clearly displayed, even in nature. Um, so, but people, you know, set that aside, and uh, because of their hardness of their heart, right? Um, so, so the wrath of God is upon them. Uh, which means that that is something that cannot be, that is inescapable, right? the judgment of God, the wrath of God. So here he says the same thing, that it's coming upon the sons of disobedience, so you don't be partakers with them. Right? You don't have this kind of a fellowship or communion 
with them in these things. Okay, let's look at verse 8. So verse 8, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So this also we, we looked at, we saw that he is the light. He gives light to those who are entering, who come into the world. He is that eternal light. Um, uh, in him, uh, John talks about in him was life. That is Zoe, God kind of life and the spiritual life. And this life was a light of men. And he gives light to every man entering into the world. So he is true enlightenment. Right? So Christ is true enlightenment. So uh, so he's saying, you know, have no fellowship with the works of darkness. Right? Have no fellowship, have no communion with the works of darkness. Because you you were darkness, right? Uh, spiritually ignorant. And uh, you had uh, in, in you was a spirit of unrighteousness, right? Uh, it's a sin. And your very nature itself. So it means that he's saying your very nature itself was sin. You were darkness, but now you are light. You see the difference, right? Exact opposite. Now you are light. And he goes on to say, in the Lord, right? Because you have fellowship with God, because you are a new creation, and you are one spirit with him, and uh, uh, he is the vine and you are the branches, you are connected to the vine, you are light. So your identity has changed from darkness to light. Right? It has nothing to do with the powers of darkness, nothing to do with sin, but you are completely different now. Something has changed because of what Christ did on the cross. Right? So you are light in the Lord. So you are, which means that you are in the Lord because of Christ. You are in Christ. And because you are in Christ, you are light. Okay. So, so that's the thing. The, the light of the world has made us light in the Lord. So our very nature has changed. Okay. So he's saying, walk as children of light. Okay. Now you live uh, in all that you think and speak and do. Be. Let, let everything, you know, what you think, what you speak, what you do, let it be in the manner of what becomes or what is becoming of people walking in the light. You know, walk as children of light. Okay. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So he's talking about the work of the Holy Spirit who is in us and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the end result of his work, of the Holy Spirit's work in our spirit, is in all righteousness and truth and goodness, right? So you walk in this manner, uh, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. So as you walk, as you live out your life, find out, you know, uh, so ask, seek, have this communion with God, find out what is acceptable to the Lord. So the thing is this, that uh, it is our... Uh, so the Lord is leading us. Right? The Spirit of God is there to lead us, to uh, to take us into all truth. The Lord Jesus said, you know, when the Holy Spirit has come, He will lead you into all truth. So that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, a uh, fruit of the Holy Spirit, uh, the, uh, the work in our lives is to take us to a place of righteousness and truth. Right. So, uh, so that is that is what uh, He does. Right. So. Uh, the thing is here, he's saying that um, uh, find out what is acceptable. Okay. In other words, uh, you know, the, uh, the old English, uh, another translation, it says uh, proving 
what is acceptable so you um, what is acceptable unto god right to um, prove to examine to discern and to find out what is acceptable agreeable to the lord well pleasing to the lord okay so the thing is uh, that that is the responsibility of the believer right to find out to to live a life of intentionally pleasing god okay so there's no point in you know coming to a place saying oh i didn't know right i didn't know that this would displease him well find out what is acceptable to the lord uh in all aspects of our life in all aspects of our life uh in all our you know human relations and uh in all aspects of our life you know find out what is acceptable so so uh, so our life is to be lived uh pleasing to the lord our life is to be lived uh, uh our walk is to be something that is always pleasing the lord and and it's not a difficult thing right because the lord jesus very clearly said you know uh, the yoke that he will he will put on us it's it's not burdensome at all right it's not burdensome at all and uh, even in romans chapter 8 uh, we see that uh, um Now let me just read that out Romans 8 so there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit so now we are walking uh, according to the spirit and um, and the holy spirit is enabling um, us to walk in the spirit uh, and and it's not uh, it's not a difficult thing if we just allow the spirit to to have uh, the right of way it is not a difficult thing it's not an impossible thing yes um so yeah so walk find out what is acceptable okay verse 11 chapter 5 verse 11 have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness so when we say fellowship we are talking about um something that is um, uh, like you know you you don't have anything the word used there again is um, oh, sorry just a minute uh, let me just get that yeah so have nothing to share in the company or don't do not participate okay? don't be a partaker uh, have no fellowship with the works of um, darkness right unfruitful works of darkness so you're saying it's not fruitful right it is not uh, something that is productive right? it is causing death how can it be fruitful because it's a, first of all it's a work of darkness um and it is secondly it is unfruitful it's not productive so why do you want to take part in that have no fellowship do not partner do not share in the uh, unproductive works of darkness okay so literally it means barren unfruitfulness it's not producing anything good right so have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret that's the reality of those who are living in uh, in darkness rather than in light um so but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light therefore says awake you who sleep arise from the dead and christ will give you light so that's the um, instruction so it continues on in verse 15 okay so let's uh, let me just share the notes here um so okay right so we um look at uh, verse 15 yeah okay so um so it says um, uh, let me just increase it a bit see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil therefore 
do not be unwise but understand what the will of the lord is and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ submitting to one another in the fear of god okay so um so here again some instructions here walk circumspectly okay so means be diligent be careful in your walk uh be intentional okay and which means you think through about certain things that you're going to be making uh, don't just rush in um or don't be uh, ignorant uh, about some things that you're going to do you know the way that you're going to live uh, be intentional be diligent and so he's saying walk circumspectly um not as fools but as wise so don't rush in foolishly don't take decisions rashly or foolishly uh, god has given you know james talks about how we can ask god for wisdom and he gives us right so uh, walk circumspectly walk wisely redeeming the time because the days are evil so which means that you live a life so that in a way that uh, that does not waste uh, your time right uh, because time is a something that's precious time that something that cannot be that cannot be taken back but he's you know in when you when we walk in a way, way that is careful when we live in a way that is uh, productive when we make the best use of our time best use of the days that we have uh, then um, the thing is it is like taking back it's like redeeming the time right it's like uh, you know taking back the time it's, it's like you know which is uh, which is something that is not possible you know in the natural uh, you cannot take back time you can you cannot reverse it right um, you can only go forward keep going forward um, but when we live a life of uh, uh, when we live a life that is walking circumspectly uh, with diligence and uh, uh, not as uh, foolish uh, uh, you know uh, making best use of the wisdom uh, that god has given us then it will be it is it is it will be like we are redeeming time itself right we are taking back time itself okay so um so that's uh something that he says and that word i just i'm just putting up that that word uh redeem right it's like uh the price uh, we, we would have studied this it's a it's a word exa Gurizo, which is uh, which is what we studied in who we are in Christ. You know, it's like the ransom, the ransom money that is paid to buy back someone from the slave market, right? Uh, so a, a ransom money that was amount that was given to um, buy back a slave, right? So so that's the word is using there, redeeming the time. So buy back time. Okay, live in such a way to buy back time. You know, time that has gone by now. It's like you're taking it back, right? So, um, so that's the pers perspective. That's the F, that's the um, that's how we are called to live. And and it's um, you know, and and it's it's so much. There's so much wisdom in that, right? Um, to to live in such a manner, right? In whatever season of life we are in whether we're young or you know young adult or you know, middle middle-aged or whatever to live in such a manner so that our life is a blessing our life is fruitful our life is productive okay to live in uh, that kind of a uh, manner that kind of a uh, you have that perspective outlook on life right okay so let's look at um, the next verse so it says therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the lord is what does god want what is god's desire for you um so understand that okay so it means that um, we need to take time and effort to be um 
to be seeking him because he's willing to reveal he's willing to show he's willing to talk he's willing to lead right he is the counselor and uh, he is a shepherd instructing guiding um and uh, and we have been privileged you know the romans 8 again talks about the fact that as sons and daughters we are privileged to be led by the spirit of god they that are led by the spirit of god they are the sons and they are the children of god so we have the privilege of all this so why not make use of the privilege you know live in such a manner right so saying understand what the will of the lord is do not uh, i mean you have which means uh, we have the ability uh, to understand and and that word understand is also to it means to continually understanding okay it's not just a one time thing that understanding what the will of the lord is you know continuing to understand uh to uh to consider to be wise and to continuing to understand so it's a continuous thing right okay so which is which is an instruction for all of us so in on all our lives to understand the will of god so first thing is to to put away from our mind or put away from ourselves that mind block that oh i cannot understand the will of god right uh, i i don't know what the will is i don't know what the plans are i don't know what the purpose put that away right set that aside and say yes my god will reveal his will his purposes for my life and i have the joy of participating of knowing and walking in it right as his child as his son as his daughter right so uh, so first thing is to just put away you know is god cannot or i cannot no we can understand the will the plan the purposes of god yeah yes there are certain things that he will reveal at the set time but he will reveal he will guide uh, because that's who he is right and uh, just want to um sorry um what i do okay yeah i just want to um read and remind us from 1 corinthians again 1 corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him verse 10 but god has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god okay the spirit of god god has you know god has given us his holy spirit he is called the spirit of revelation and wisdom and god has revealed these things what what we are, what the natural eye has not seen what the ear has not heard or what has not even entered into the heart of man you know what has not entered our spirit but god the holy spirit reveals god reveals by his spirit right he, which means he gives us revelation now uh, we need to be able to seek him intentionally and and walk in the revelation of what we what he gives right so um, therefore do not be unwise uh, understand what the will of the lord is okay verse 18 says do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit okay so do not be drunk with wine in which is so um so don't don't be under the influence of wine okay so like a lot of people would say okay uh, you don't, don't have to be drunk with wine you can probably take in small uh, you know uh, small portions or whatever but but the fact is that uh, you know you're opening the door for the influence of being under the influence of wine right so so is really is challenging the children i mean uh, he's challenging challenging uh, again the believer and uh, you know it's part of walking as children of light so he's saying that you know don't be uh, influenced by by don't be under the influence of wine do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation so saying that there's only wastefulness 
right? Uh, there's only uh, wastefulness and, uh, uh, you know, excess and, uh, you know, it just causes you to uh, live in a way where uh, it 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 brings you um, to a to a point of um, uh, a wastefulness. There's nothing productive about that, right? So, so he's saying, but be filled with the spirit. Okay. So, what does that mean? That means that we have the privilege of being filled with the spirit uh, every day. Okay. So we go, we ask the Lord. He's the one who fills us with His Spirit. We see in the book of Acts that people were being filled with the Spirit multiple times. Right? So you might say, okay, there, there was a point when I was baptized with the Spirit, uh, with the Holy Spirit, and I, you know, I prayed in tongues and um, or you know other other gifts were made manifest, and but that was some time back. Okay. So, but what now? Okay, the instruction is be filled with the Spirit. So being continually being filled or being under the influence of the Holy Spirit is what we are called to do. Now we, we, even in the book of Acts, we see that, okay, Acts chapter 2, they were all filled. They were baptized in the Spirit. They were filled with the Spirit. And, uh, you know, we, saw, we, we see what, what happens, right? They, um, Acts chapter 2 verse 4 talks about they were all filled with the Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then we, we continue to uh, read that and we go on to, uh, let's say, um, Acts chapter 3. And Acts uh, uh, chapter 3, or is it 4? Right. Um, yeah, Acts chapter 4, we read um, the, that... Uh, 4 and verse 31 we see that they are praying for the for the for peter peter and uh, peter and john and uh, uh, and so they, uh, they they because they've been asked not to uh, share the gospel they've been asked not to you know this is immediately after the miracle um, the, the the lame man began to walk and so they are praying and this is what happens and when they had prayed the verse 31 says they were the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So we see, you know, multiple times this is happening, right? They, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with uh, gladness. So uh, with boldness, sorry. So we, we see that. Okay. And, and then we, we see further also, you know, uh, and how they were filled with the Spirit of God. So we see that multiple times people are filled. So so also for us, right? Uh, we don't need to stop, you know, let it be something in the past, but continually we can be filled and uh, be under the influence of the Spirit. So So which means that to be sensitive, to respond, to cooperate, to yield, and to obey in order to be led by Him. Right? So we, so we welcome, welcome the work of the Spirit. And the and the and the Greek word there, be filled, means to be to be complete, to be full of. You know? So how do we do that? We simply ask in faith, and He fills us. Right? We ask in faith and we and he fills us. So um, like, well, will I know when, how will I know? Well, we are asking in faith. You pray, believing that you receive and you and you will have it. And you, you know that this is scriptural. So we know it's the will of God for, for the believer to be filled with the Spirit. So just go ahead and ask and be filled. Right. Um, so uh, what is the outcome of that? Okay, so he's saying, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So the Spirit of God, uh, when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, that he enables you to do this, um, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to to you know, to edify one another, to, to minister to one another, um, to uh, sing, it says with with making melody in your heart to the Lord. 
okay giving thanks always for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ submitting to one another in the fear of god so all this you know just a outflow of uh, living a spirit filled life a spirit filled life resulting in uh, you know inspiration for psalms and hymns a spiritual life moving us to sing and make melody in our hearts to the lord you know help enabling us to worship enabling us to even you know ins inspiring us to write songs maybe you know come out with songs hymns spiritual songs and um, to minister to the lord in worship you know making melody in your heart to the lord okay. and the other things as well giving thanks for all things to god uh, giving thanks always for all things um, in the name of the uh, to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Okay, submitting to one another, so yielding to one another, and not bossing over one another, and so uh, and then you know, so this is something that uh, that Paul writes and he says, okay, in the church that it's not like you want to take the upper hand over the other believer, but be submitted to one another, you know, honoring one another. Okay, so let's move on to verse 22, right? 22 onwards. So here, from 22 onwards, Paul talks about the, the earthly relationships, and he's talking about husband and wife, children and parents, uh, and, and so on. And even also talks about, um, you know, uh, uh, an employer-employee, um, you know, kind of a situation also, right? So, so let's read through that. Okay, verse 22, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning, the, concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each of you in particular, particular, so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So he's talking about a husband and wife relationship. So start by saying in verse 22, uh, wives submit to your own husbands. So he's saying, you know, wives accept the leadership of your husband. Okay, yield to the leadership of the husband. Okay, so. So that's uh, that's uh, uh, that, that's an instruction for the wives, and he says so for the uh, verse twenty three for the husband is the head of the wife as also Christ is head of the church and he is the savior of the body. So he's talking about a divine design, okay, uh, a design something that has been designed by God, uh, God Himself, and um, and something that God has placed a, a design that he has placed in human relationships right in marriage something that has been designed by god for marriage to work well okay so when we say that you know when we say okay uh, any product or phone you know it's 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 got a certain way of working it has been designed and uh, you know that it functions in a certain way and it has certain instructions, you know, you, for, for switching on, you have something that you need to do. For charging the phone, you know, you need something to do. So similarly, God who designed marriage 
he's giving certain instruction based on the design and he's saying okay this is how i designed it this is how i have you know i have created I, this is how i have made so wives submit to your own husbands as unto the lord okay but the husband is the head of the wife so uh, so we read you know even just before that we read you know in verse 21 submitting to one another in the fear of the lord you know living the spiritual life is to be filled with the spirit and to be submitting to one another okay each other in the fear of the lord and so it's both ways right here uh, with regard to marriage specifically he says wives submit um yield to the headship of the husband so uh, when he says husband he, he god has created okay husband to be the head of the wife as christ is the head of the church and he is the savior as christ is the savior of the body so this is how he has designed that does not in any way mean that um the 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 wife is lower in in any way um to the husband because uh, you know we we read in other scripture that we are heirs together uh in christ right uh, i think uh, um where do we see that that we are joint heirs with Christ? I think we see in Ephesians itself, right? We see that uh, uh, we have redemption, and uh, you know, uh, we see that uh, we are His workmanship. So it talks about both the husband and the wife. Right? We are we are His workmanship, and we are we are heirs together uh, with Christ, um, and and so on. So which means that. Um, um, so there is there is no inequality there right as uh, uh, there is no in inequality between the husband and the wife so it is a divine design right? and and this is something that we saw in uh, i think did we see in galatians galatians um okay i'm just trying to um share that verse Um, okay, I'll I'll just share the reference a little later. So so the, so this is something that um, that Christ has um, Christ has made us, and so uh, and and when we read, you know, when we read further, we go on to see that, um, you know, in verse twenty four we see that just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So that's that's just one part of the instruction okay so if, if he's going to be instructing the wife then we can be sure that there is uh, you know an instruction following uh, following this instruction an instruction for the husband as well okay so okay so for the husband he says this husbands verse 25 okay before that you know it's he's saying to your own husband so it's not like okay uh, man you know woman needs to be submitted to man you know he's particularly talking about a husband and wife okay it's not any other man but to their own husband right the wife to the to her own husband to be submitted to be yielded and and to consider the husband as as the head of that relationship Right? That, uh, as a as a leader who will lead in in that particular relationship right okay so we see in verse 24 so 25 it says husbands love your wives just as christ also loved the church and gave himself for her you okay, know that's the you know that's the instruction for the husband so which means that husband you you love you know it it, it is going to be a very sacrificial love radical sacrificial love because that's the kind of love that christ has for his body the church right so he's saying husbands love your wives just as christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word okay so this is what the lord does that he that he cleanses the 
the body of Christ, that it cleanses every believer in the, uh, you know, who is, who is the church uh, with the washing of the water and sanctifies by the, and cleanses by the washing of the water. You know, the, the word of God cleanses. It's like water washing away all impurities. It's like water cleansing the body. Right, physically. So that is what the word of God does. It does a work of cleansing all impurities. It has the ability to, um, to take away and make new and bring about a freshness, uh, to take away all the dirt, to take away everything that is, that is harmful and, uh, and makes a person dirty. Uh, the word of God has the ability to do that. And so the word, and God does this by his word or through his word, right? He washes, he sanctifies, he cleanses us, uh, cleanses, you know, the, the church, us. So with the intention that he might present himself or present the church to himself uh, as a glorious church without having any spot or wrinkle or any such thing. At any blemish, right? Any any kind of uh, uh, you know any lack in any way, right? Okay, so we'll we'll uh, stop here, um, and then we'll we'll take a break, and then we'll come back again, right? Uh, we'll come back in ten minutes, right?